the end of this week, Thursday night, we are going to have the festival of Hanukkah. A lot about Hanukkah I wrote in my book, the mystical glory, service and festivals. One can get my book, glazerson.com, many other books also. So, my book deals with many festivals, Sabbaths, but there are quite few pages about Hanukkah. So I try to show really deep ideas about Hanukkah, very famous or known, but very, very interesting one. So let us start with a very interesting idea, brought by Sfat Semet, which says the following. So, this is what he says about the eight days of Hanukkah, which the rabbis established, it is not, not in the Torah, you have indications in the Torah to Hanukkah, but you don't have, definitely is not festival was established from the Torah, it was by the rabbis, the establishes. It's a memorial to the miracle of the oil, as you know quite well the story. But our rabbis tell us that there is similarity between Sukkot, the festival of eight days, and the eight, day, the eight days of Hanukkah. Both have the same number, but not only the number of days is the same, but there is much deeper idea as Hanukkah is a reflection of the eight days of the early day of Sukkot. Reflection. It means basically Hanukkah is in it light of Sukkot. How it comes out. So connection between Hanukkah and Sukkot is recognizable from the similar ideas which these holidays represent. The ideas behind Hanukkah and Sukkot are similar. How? On Hanukkah, the central theme is a victory over Israel's enemies and revelation of the divine presence. Similarly, on Sukkot, the sacrificing of the oxen, animals, which represent the hostile nations of the world, symbolizes the destruction of Israel's enemies. This metaphoric image is joined with the mitzvah of the sukkah, which is, in essence, alludes to the divine presence shielding Israel. This is the root of Israel's victory over its oppressors. On Hanukkah, the illumination from the candles is a sign of the power of the divine presence which aids Israel in the struggle against its false enemies. So, both Hanukkah and Sukkot represent the victory of Jews, Israel, over their enemies. <laughs> and unfortunately, there are many of them. There are physical ones, basically. Not interested that a, a nation of Israel will exist, like you see, Amalekites. Today also, Iran. Yeah, they want to wipe out Israel physically. But there are nations definitely in the past, who were interested the Jews will leave their traditions, their faith in God, in the Torah, and will get there, like Christianity. How many Jews were killed, murdered, whatever you call it, because Christians want them to become Christians. We know the story of the Inquisition. Yeah. And there are, even today, enemies, spiritual enemies, against the purity of Jews, which was the Hanukkah, the Greeks. Yeah, the Greeks 
We're not interested to kill Jews. They want Jews to give up their Torah, to give up their purity. Therefore, they made decree they should not circumcise, should not keep Sabbath. You know, quite well. So it was opposition to the spiritual side of Judaism. But we have both of them, unfortunately, also today. Those who want to destroy them physically, like Iran, and spiritually. Unfortunately, in Israel itself, you know, if you want to destroy them spiritually, not keeping the Shabbos, not keeping the purity of life, men and women, so, Hanukkah, basically, is a symbol of this kind of animals who did not, were not interested to kill Jews physically, only spiritually, not to keep the service, not to synchronize. But the physically, they did not. In fact, this is the reason why the festival of Hanukkah, we emphasize mainly the spiritual victory not that mitzvah to eat, to have meals and so on, no. From the other side on Purim, when the Amalekite, Aman, <laughs> he wanted to destroy them physically. He did not want the Jewish nation to exist, like Iran today. Persia is the past in Iran today. So they want to destroy the physical existence of Israel of Jews. So therefore, on Purim, that we had such great miracle, therefore, on Purim, we have a mitzvah to eat and to enjoy, even to praise God. So this is really the example. Purim and Hanukkah are basically two festivals representing the physical and the spiritual. The same thing also Sukkot. As Sukkot, one can say represent both of them. And these are, as it is known, on Sukkot we bring 70 bullocks. The, so offering against the 70 nations. Now 70 nations against Israel. Not of them wanted to do them physically, even also spiritually. So basically, Sukkot is both together. So you have Sukkot, then you have Hanukkah, like this, then you have Purim. It is very interesting that Purim, one day, is like the continuation of Shavuot, one day. On Shavuot, we go to the Torah, you know the story in Sinai, good God forced Jews to accept. Yeah, he puts them under, you know the story, under the mountain. They say, no, we are going to do. But our Rebbe tell us the Jews accepted at that time the written Torah. But the oral Torah, the Trebbes will decide they did not. But when Purim, when they saw the greatness of Mordechai, the great Rebbe, and as thousands understand the power of rabbis, and they accept as the author, which definitely is based on rabbis, they decide things there. So, this is really the idea of Sukkot and Hanukkah, as we said. Now, let us see a deeper idea about the relationship between Hanukkah and Sukkot. This is described in our mystical books. So these books say that Sukkot is considered to be the holiday of Aaron. Aaron the priest, the high coin, the high priest. The man was material's conduct and Israel the protection of the clouds of glory. While they journeyed in the wilderness, you know quite well the story. This is really why we sit in the sukkah to remember the greatness 
of God, loving nicest of God, to surround us with clouds. Now we defend us. Then, also very interesting is the idea that in Medrash, really, the Medrash is the following. The Midrash relates that Israel merited the holiday of Hanukkah also because of Aaron. Interesting. Why? What was the story? So the Midrash says that Aaron was said because he could not participate in the dedication of the tabernacle. You know the story. All the tribes brought offerings, but Aaron did not. So he couldn't participate in the education of the tabernacle. So God consoled him by giving him a function greater than the princes of the tribes who had brought the sacrifices as a dedication. So what Aaron is different, why is greater? So the rabbi said the Midrash Aaron would be lightening the oil lamps in the tabernacle. So the lightning would not only be carried out there in the temple, but it would be an external lightning. The Ramban cites the Midrash stating that the eternity is expressed in the kindling of the Hanukkah lights, which continues even after the destruction of the temple. So amazing. So in fact, when God said to Aaron, yours is greater, lightning the candles is greater. Why? It should be the same thing like the offering limited to the time of the temple. I said, no, your lightning will carry on all over history of the Messiah. Or those lights of Hanukkah are those lights which also were in the tabernacle, in the temple. Amazing. Going to Kabbalah, the hidden light was shining from them. So, you see, that Hanukkah is the holiday which Israel merited through Aaron, just as we are indebted to him for the holiday of Sukkot, so Hanukkah. So amazingly, both Hanukkah and Sukkot basically is the merit of Aaron, the clouds of glory, which is the basis of Sukkot. We are in the merit of Aaron and the light that we light on Hanukkah also is in the merit of Aaron. It is so interesting that the Tikkun Ezzar, and not Tikkun Ezzar, it's Kabbalah, also comments that Hanukkah expresses the grandeur of the attributes of Aaron. On Hanukkah, God appears as Israel's shield and fortress, just as we were to them in the deserts. Evidence by the clouds of glory which envelop the camp of Israel. It is very interesting that the month of Hanukkah is called Kislev in Hebrew. Kislev, Chodesh Kislev, the month of Kislev. And every name of the month, the meaning, the name of the month Kislev pertains to this idea. Well, we find written in our holy books that the root of the word Kislev is Kessel, which denotes fortitude and security. As said, in scriptures is written there, which means whose security shall be cut off and whose trust shall be spider's web. So the word Kislev there, yeah, means really portrait, means 
castle, it says, it says that the English word castle, the same idea. Right? It also represents this idea of the name castle, which in the Bible we see that it means really security, fortitude. So the month of Kisler is a month of security. Besides, Jews in Hanukkah manage to overcome such empire, like the Greeks, no? hoping that this Hanukkah also. You have lots of enemies. Iran and others want to destroy Israel, anti-Semites. Our sages found many allusions in the Torah to the holiday of Hanukkah. We say that Hanukkah basically was established by rabbis, but nevertheless, our rabbis found very interesting allusions to Hanukkah in the Torah. Hanukkah is alluded to, to through the commandments of lightening the lamps of the menorah in the holy tabernacle, which is described at the end of the weekly portion of a mor. The mor is a portion which a lot of uh, festivals are mentioned there, and definitely the festival of Sukkot, which is towards the end of the portion. So this topic immediately follows the conclusion of the laws concerning Sukkot, and the very close proximity of the commandments of lightening the oil lamps to the section and appointed season is in indication that a new festival was destined. It means there is a portion to survey commanding, and in this portion, God commanded Moses to kindle, to put the light in the temple, the menorah. Amazing. And this comes immediately after the story of Sukkot. So the very close proximity of the commandments of lightning, the oil lamps, to the section on a pointed season and in Indications that a new festival was destined to the instituted and that the core of the new festivals would be the mitzvah of lightning the menorah. Amazing. So here are the indications of Hanukkah, which comes after Sukkot, like in the Torah, the command of lighting in the temple comes after the command of keeping Sukkot. So this also said the Rukach indicates that like Sukkot is eight days, so the festival of lightning, the menorah, is also this is.